What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I have a FUBU update video for you. It's been a minute since I've made an update, so I wanna give you guys the latest news on the company, share a few of my opinions with you, and point out a few things to look forward to in 2022. So if you're a FUBU investor, make sure to watch through the entire video. I think you will find this video helpful and give you guys an idea of where I think FUBU is headed this year. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, take a second to do that. Also make sure to smash the like button, it'll help get this video out to other investors. And with that being said, let's get started. Let's first take a look at the stock price for today. We are down over 7% for the day, trading at $13.60. From a bigger time frame, we are near the 52 week low. Our 52 week range is $12.79. So in my opinion, I think this is a great time to start accumulating some shares. Or if you're still considering starting a position, I think this is a great area to start your position. One of the reasons this is down today is just because of the Fed talk and all the fears of inflation and monetary policy. So there's a lot of selling pressure in the high growth sector right now. FUBU is not the only stock. You can take a look across the sector and you'll see the same thing. DraftKings, Hood, SoFi, Opendoor. A lot of these growth stocks, growth percentage is getting compressed. But if you're a long-term investor, this is probably a great opportunity for you. I also did highlight FUBU's next earnings date because we'll be taking a look at their guidance estimates. But the actual results won't be out till end of February, first week of March. So before we take a look at Q4's guidance, I want to show you the latest for the Q3 earnings. They had 945,000 paid subscribers in Q3, and the other important revenue is 157 million in revenue for Q3 as well. So just a few days ago, they did announce their preliminary fourth quarter results, including the revenue and subscriber growth. So both revenue and subscriber metrics are expected to exceed previously issued guidance, resulting in a record quarter and year for FUBU TV. The fourth quarter 2021 total revenue is expected to be between 215 million to 220, which is going to be an increase of over 105% year over year, which is outpacing the previous guidance of 205 to 210 million. The total revenue for the entire year of 2021 is going to be over 622 million to about 627, and that's also going to be a three digit percent growth. It's going to be 138% year over year which is going to be about 10 million over their prior guidance of 612 to 617 million. Fourth quarter advertising revenue is going to be over 25 million, which is going to equal 90% year over year with an annual run rate of about 100 million. So that's just revenue that they're getting from displaying advertisements on their platform. It's not much revenue now, but it is growing very fast over 90% this year. One of their more interesting metrics is definitely going to be the paid subscribers at the end of the year. Uh, as I showed you guys in Q3, they hadn't crossed the 1 million mark. But at the end of Q4, they do expect to break that milestone. They're expecting to do 1.1 million subscribers, which is going to be an increase of more than 100% for the year. These are great numbers, uh, but it's hard to compare these to some of the bigger names like Hulu, Netflix, and some of the other big platforms that have 200 million plus subscribers. But this does show great progress and it shows that there's room for expansion. So it does give you an incentive to invest in a company with such growth potential, even if they only get a fraction of the entire market. That would be huge for FUBU. The other highlight to point out is they will have 375 million of cash, cash equivalents in restricted cash at the end of the quarter. So they will have over half of their annual revenue, so not a bad balance sheet. They also mentioned that the metrics above do not include any of their recent acquisitions. So Molotovo SaaS does not contribute to any of this revenue or metric subscriptions. Just a quick summary statement of our co-founder and CEO, David. He said 2021 closes out a pivotal year where our meaningful advancements will help to define a new category of interactive sports and entertainment television. And that's just tying in the entire sports book and the streaming platform together, trying to create and pioneer something not seen in the market yet. In the fourth quarter, we continue to deliver triple digit revenue growth. This wraps up a phenomenal year where we grew revenue by over 138% while advancing towards our path to profitability. We look forward to discussing our full fourth quarter and year end results for 2021. So I'll be looking forward to the earnings call and some of the metrics that I'll be looking at is their EBITDA, the earnings per share and the current cash flow. So all that looks great, uh, but we will need to wait for the earnings to actually confirm all those numbers. And that will give us a better idea of how the company performed this previous quarter. Something that I did want to cover that they announced today is FUBU did acquire exclusive Premier League rights in Canada beginning in 2022-2023 season. So that will be later this year. If you didn't know, Premier League is England's top soccer league. It's basically the NFL of Europe, possibly even Canada. I'm not really sure. Canada is kind of in the middle between Canadian football, Premier League, and maybe other sports. 
but I know for a fact it's the go-to sport in Europe. One of my friends lives in Europe and that is all she watches, but you guys can comment down below if you agree. So the way this works is usually FUBU pays a licensing right to get the Premier League rights. The terms of the deal were not disclosed, but FUBU will exclusively carry 380 Premier League matches each season, and that will be for three years going through 2024-2025 season. All the content will be streamed live on FUBU TV and its linear channel FUBU Sports Network. This is where it gets interesting because initially when I read the headlines, I was like, oh, Premier League, that's going to help their user growth. But then I remember that the sports book is actually already out. They've already launched it in two states in the U.S. Not exactly sure all the regulations outside of the U.S., but I know Canada is a big fan of sports betting. So that's going to be huge because I think Canada already has all the rights for sports betting across the country. As far as Europe, I don't really know. If you live in Europe, comment down below if sports betting is legal and how far along you think FUBU TV is in the process of getting their sports book open and launched in the European market. So going back to the user growth, since this is an exclusive Premier League rights, people living in Canada will need to sign up through FUBU if they want to stream any of the 380 Premier League matches. So this helps user growth from people that just want to stream the premier matches but then there's also going to be the other side of people that sign up for FUBU because they want to bet on the premier league matches since FUBU does have their sportsbook underway. Like I said I'm not exactly sure if the FUBU sportsbook is officially live in Canada but the next premier league season won't start till later this year so FUBU has plenty of time to get this up and running before the season. So not only did FUBU score the Premier League deal for Canada, but just a few months ago they also acquired exclusive rights for Italia Serie A and Coppa Italia rights in the market. So this positions FUBU's platform as the leading streaming service for top tier soccer in the country. Here's a quote from our CEO and co-founder David, which by the way, co-founder companies usually tend to perform well in the long term. For example, Facebook, Amazon, but that's just a side note. The Premier League is considered to be the best soccer league in the world and it has a huge fan base in Canada. So that kind of clarifies my statement from earlier. Uh, this deal allows us to bring yet another top-notch property to FUBU TV, further differentiating our content offerings and giving Canadians another reason to cut the cord for exciting exclusive sports content. So main key there is differentiating themselves from the other platforms and making it a more attractive and necessary subscription for all the sports fan watchers. As I mentioned before, FUBU is a sports first platform, so it doesn't really compete with Netflix, Hulu, Paramount, and all those others because those are more entertainments. With FUBU, you get the best sports package than any of the others, and then you have a smaller selection of entertainment and news, but the main thing is the sports. And you really don't get that with other packages like Hulu or Peacock. You might have one or two channels with live TV, but you also have to pay extra to get the live so at that point it just makes more sense to get a separate sports subscription like FUBU TV. The last thing on here that caught my attention is in addition to its soccer rights in Canada, FUBU TV does have exclusive streaming rights to the Qatar World Cup 2022 qualifying matches and that will be for the South American Football Confederation in the US. So with this exclusive streaming rights it's definitely going to be targeting subscription growth in the US. Now soccer is actually not a very popular sport in the US. The, uh, the go-to sport is the NFL, but that is a completely different story when we're talking about the World Cup. The US is very competitive and a lot of people tune in to watch the matches. So this is going to be a great opportunity for FUBU to grow their exposure in the US. And I think when people sign up to watch the matches, they'll try the platform and end up liking it and probably continue to use it even after the World Cup. Take this for example, I signed up for Spotify. I wanted to just try it out and uh, after a couple years, I'm still using Spotify. So that is just an example. If they have a good product, Product, people will continue to use it especially if you're a sports fan I think FUBU will be a sticky platform for them now I want to pivot over to the 2022-2023 Premier League schedule initially I was thinking that some of the viewership would kind of overlap since the Premier League and the QTAR would be playing simultaneously but the Premier League and all the Federation higher-ups actually think about this also they want to get the most people to tune into games and keep the viewership as high as possible. So they actually accommodate both schedules in order to keep people watching games the longest, which in the end helps FUBU maximize their user retention, revenue, and if they do have their sports book up and running, also maximize their sports betting activity. 
So in order to accommodate for the Premier League and the Qatar 2022 World Cup, the Premier League season will start on August 6th. There is a schedule of how they accommodated the Premier League games with the Qatar World Cup games, but for the purpose of this video, I'll let you guys look at that on your own time. Just wanted to share with you guys that FUBU will be able to take full opportunity of both of these huge events this year. But overall, I think this is going to bring in a whole new user base. It's going to help increase user growth as well as the revenue coming in from both the streaming side and the sports betting market as each region gets approved. Like I said, soccer is still a growing sport. It's definitely not the biggest in the US, but when it comes to the World Cup, more than half the world does watch it. The audit numbers show a record of 3.5 billion people watched 2018's World Cup. This spans across people watching at home, out of home, or even on digital platforms, with the final being watched live with the combined 1.2 billion viewers worldwide. So that just gives an idea of how many users they can actually grow, not to mention the amount of people that will want to bet on a team during each of these games. And then leading up to the grand final, which I know tons of people will want to bet on the final. So I just want to wrap up the video by giving you guys my final thoughts on their earnings projections. FUBU being a high growth stock, we are nowhere near profitability, so I'll be honest with you, we don't expect to be profitable in 2021, 2022. We're going to be reporting over negative $2 earnings per share this year and next year. But I think that is something FUBU definitely needs to work on. I think that is a reason that a lot of people are very afraid to invest in this one. Even though FUBU is a very young company, it is delivering phenomenal growth numbers, three digit percents in the most recent quarters. It is also showing its determination and ambition by trying to create a new market and combining sports streaming and betting all in one. Eventually that could even expand further than sports like betting on decisions within a show or betting what a movie character will do next and so on. But that's just an idea for down the road. As far as next year though, we will not be profitable and that is okay. As long as they can manage their cash well, then 300 plus million should last them a while. For next year, they're projecting to bring in over $1 billion in revenue which will be over 71% from this year. Since this year, they're projecting to bring in over 620 million. So really good growth for next year. We can maybe even hit this higher estimate if the QTAR in the Premier League goes very well. So that'd be something to watch for and would be very huge for this company. Also, I don't know if some of these metrics account for the sports book and the reason acquisitions. So that is something that we will have to pay attention to in the coming quarters. Um, so some of these estimates might be low than what they're actually gonna bring in next year. Well guys, that is all I have for today. Uh, long term, I am very bullish for the company because I think this will be trading at a higher price down the road. Don't let the short term price action remove you of your conviction in a company. I don't think the current stock price reflects the potential in this company. But you guys let me know in the comments if I missed anything. I hope you guys found value in this video. Make sure to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel. I will see you guys in the next video. And until then, keep moving forward.